Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. In today's video we are going to be covering past papers and we're going to practice some questions specifically from the grade 12 life sciences paper paper 1 2020. If you are new here don't forget to like this video and subscribe as I will be posting a new video every Thursday for all high school biology students. In this specific video, we are going to focus on Life Sciences Paper 1 from 2020. It is the Government NSC exam. And um, we're going to look at question 2.1, which is a nervous system question. Now, if at this point you would like to pause the video so that you can attempt the questions first before we go through it, then now is the time to do that. All right, let's get into how do you unpack these questions so that you know what they're asking, so that you can give the right answer, and also to make sure that there is no misinterpretation. Now, whenever there's a question with a diagram, it's really important to um, spend some time um, looking over this diagram and making sure you're very familiar with all the structures. So the question says the diagrams below show different parts of the brain and the ear. And so as you see on this picture, we have a whole bunch of labeled components on the brain as well as in the ear. And what I tell my students is to go through this Label everything before you even look at the questions, because often what happens is you quickly look at the picture, you go straight to the questions, and you overlook something, you misidentify something in a rush, and it leads to the dreaded silly mistake where you could have easily avoided it. So step one, label everything. Don't panic if you cannot label everything in that moment. Start the process, and if you come back, you may be able to find the label later on, and they might not even ask a question on that component. So don't fear if you don't know what all the labels are. Label what you can see. Now, if we go over to the questions, the very first question literally asks you to identify part A, B, and H, which you would have already done previously now because you would have labeled it on your diagram. And these are three quick, easy marks now that you can claim. For question 2.1.2, it says give the letter and the name of the part of the ear that absorbs excess pressure waves from the inner ear. So this is for two marks, which means you're going to get one mark for writing down the correct letter, and you're going to get one mark for the correct um, component's name or the structure's name. Now, be very careful with this question because some people are going to see the word um, pressure wave and they're going to think, oh, it must be the structure that maintains the pressure in the ear. And maybe you wrote H and you wrote astution tube. And that's not the right answer because the astution tube maintains the pressure in the whole ear. What we are looking for is the structure that gets rid of excess pressure waves from the inner ear. And the only structure responsible for that is G, which is the round window. It's the small little opening over here that actually leads into the inner ear. Next on 2.1.3, it says name, which means you're going to provide just one answer. Okay. And whatever you write first is what is going to be marked. Keep that in mind. We mark the first answers at the end of the year. It says name the receptors found at part E. And so if we go over to the diagram, we would have already labeled part E as the cochlea. And the cochlea has only one receptor in it that we have learned, and that is the organ of corti. For question 2.1.4, it says explain why damage to part B can lead to instant death. So we now look over to our diagram and we find part B and we see it's a part of the brain. Now this is an explain question and it is for two marks. So when you explain, you have to give a cause for one mark and then an effect for a second mark. So why would damaging B cause death? Well, if you labeled it earlier, you would know that part B is the medulla oblongata. And what is it responsible for? It is responsible for our most basic, basic functions such as heartbeat and breathing. So if there was damage to the medulla oblongata, it would be unable to regulate your breathing and your heart rate. Therefore, 
if they stopped being regulated, they would stop working and instant death would occur. Moving on to question 2.1.5, we have a describe question now, and it says describe how part C responds to impulses received by part D. So if we go over to our diagram, part C is the cerebellum, we would have labeled that, and we're going to find part D, which is up the top here, which are the semicircular canals of the ear. So now what you have to do is you have to show the relationship between these two structures and you have to describe it. When you have a describe question, you have to give more than just an explanation. You have to give me the how it happens, why it happens, and when or where it happens. So that's roughly going to give you the three marks. So we have to explain the how, the why, and the where or the when. Now, if you are needing help with question words, I actually have a video already up on this topic explaining exactly what every question word in an exam means. And I suggest you go and have a look at it at the end of this video. Our last question for 2.1.6 says, in older people, part F may harden. Explain how this condition may lead to hearing loss. Now, this is quite a lengthy answer. It's four marks, which means that your explanation must be very, very specific. Again, an explanation is all about how and why, but when it's for four marks, the how and the why needs to have at least two points each. Now, when we speak about the structure F, which in this case is going to be the oval window, it is referring to what happens when our oval window hardens. Now, the oval window is this little structure that we see, I'm just going to circle it for you, sitting in between the uh, middle ear and the inner ear. And this is where sound is transferred from the middle ear to the inner ear. And if that place is hardened and it's not nice and flexible, it means that sound waves cannot be um, transported from the middle ear to the inner ear. And if they can't be transported, you won't hear anything. There won't be any pressure waves that will move through the cochlea and stimulate the organ of corti. And therefore, no hearing will be interpreted and you will have hearing loss. Let's take a look now at the memo to mark the answers that perhaps you've already done. And just to clarify any questions that you may have about how to answer certain things. So here is the memo for the questions that we have just done. Please remember to make note of all of our mark allocations. These are mostly one marks and two marks. But what I want to get down to is uh, particularly question 2.1.6, when we were speaking about what happens with the um, oval window um, and, and, and how it hardens in old age. And it says here, any four. And so what that means is when they mark this at the end of the year, you have a couple of options that you can give in order to get your four marks. Now, remember, this was an explain question and an explanation needs a how and then it needs a why. So it says here that our oval window will not vibrate freely. Therefore, no vibrations are carried to the cochlea or inner ear. Therefore, no pressure waves will form. Therefore, there will be no stimulation of the organ of corti. Therefore, there will be no transmission of impulses to the cerebrum, and that will lead to hearing loss. So as you can see for this last question, it's almost like a flowing answer. If this doesn't happen, then this won't happen. And if that doesn't happen, then this won't happen. And what we often find is um, matriculants get these kinds of questions wrong because they can explain how hearing works, but for some reason they struggle with explaining the opposite, like what is hearing loss? Explain how hearing loss occurs. And you shouldn't be overwhelmed by this. If you already know how hearing works, you should be able to explain how hearing won't function if the structures that are responsible for hearing aren't working correctly. 
As always, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I have many more of these past paper questions in a specific playlist for you to go over. I also have what I call tricky questions. These are the questions that often catch out my tricks, and I'd love you to have a look through them and go over them before your finals. It will really make you feel comfortable and prepared for your final exam. As always, I'll see you again soon. Bye.